Good morning. Welcome into the Alana Inquirer podcast. It's Jeremy Warner and Derek Piper. I had to catch myself. It is 1.30 a.m. local time here. Derek Piper's already got his morning coffee going. Morning I got coffee. Diet, diet Coke over here. As we had to, I canceled my flight, Derek. Uh, we were going to leave out of Providence yesterday. I, I just felt like I needed to book something. I canceled that just a couple minutes ago. And I uh, have to extend our hotel. Hopefully we can do that in the morning. Uh, but these are good problems to have because we ain't freaking leaving. Illinois not leaving. Hanging around, <laughs> hanging around in Boston as they beat Iowa State 72-69 in the Sweet 16. They advanced to the Elite Eight. We're covering mm-hmm. an Elite Eight game where Illinois takes on top-ranked UConn on Saturday night around 5-10 Central Time, 6-10, uh, I believe. Or is it 5-10 Eastern Time? I got to – Figure that out. It's early. I think in the it's morning. six ten Eastern. Yeah, six, six ten, 10 Eastern, Eastern, five ten Central. Yep. Yeah, all these numbers going through my head, but it was a gritty, grimy effort. It's kind of the game Iowa State wanted to play. Brad Underwood talked about that afterwards. Derek uh, looked a little hairy there at times. Illinois let Iowa State hang around. Illinois never trailed in this game. Great start, eleven to two right away, hitting these threes, moving the ball really well. This Iowa State team grinds on you. Terrence Shannon gets in foul trouble. But then he comes back in and makes some clutch plays, along with Luke Goody, Marcus Damas. Coleman Hawkins was fantastic in this one. Derek, we're going to go cover an Elite Eight game. And this Illini fan base, you are elite again. You are on the national mm-hmm. stage, and you get a chance to shock the world. But, Derek, first thoughts uh, as I finally hand the mic to you two minutes into this podcast. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is what it's all about. What a stage this is uh, to be in this building and, and the, the bright lights and just the stakes and whatnot. This is this is awesome. So uh, never covered a Sweet 16 before. We'd love to make this a regular occurrence if we could, but uh, we'll live in the moment right now. Just seeing the tension late, man. It, it felt like there in the first half with the way Terrence was playing and the ball movement, uh, really attacking Iowa State, taking away you know their game plan to clog up that lane. Illinois was able to play out a double team, swing it, make threes. Thought Illinois might you know punch them in the face and not stop until it was over. Uh, not no disrespect to Iowa State. I knew they were a good team, but uh, just that start was fantastic, especially the way that Illinois was defending. Like you mentioned, it gets hairy a lot of times. It felt like you're up 10 at half, felt like it should have been 15-plus with the free throws. Uh, that was something that, that really thought you could, it could come back to bite Illinois. And then, of course, Iowa State's down two at one point there in the, in the second half, and Shannon's on the bench with four fouls. So uh, just a, a whirlwind of emotions. Watching the Illini fans in the stands was – uh, entertainment in itself. Uh, I know that the stomachs were turning and the tensions were high and whatnot, but uh, for the third time in 30 years, this program's going back to the Elite Eight. They're there. They're on the doorstep of the Final Four. They're going to play UConn as an absolute machine, and they have one heck of a supporting uh, fan base here in, in the area. So uh, just to have that chance. I know that while you're here and you got Shannon playing like this, it's it's more than just, you know, take a picture uh, at the first time out. Hey, we made it. Like, you got a real chance to actually win this thing, go to the Final Four. And uh, kind of one thing that I'm going to write about and things that we've kind of tossed around here is that this team set high expectations from the very beginning of this season, had the meeting of their standards, talked about these are old guys, they're about winning. Some have been uh, to Sweet 16s and whatnot. A lot of guys have been to the tournament, but uh, they're living out the path that they saw for themselves. Obviously, they still want more, but it's pretty special that they're delivering on what they said would be a big-time season. Welcome into 500 people awake at 1.35 a.m. Eastern time, 12.35 Central. We appreciate you. Thanks for staying up late with us. I'm sure a lot of people out in Boston here, Derek, having a beer. Brad Underwood shouted out them. Have fun in the pubs for the next 48 hours. Uh, we'll be there tomorrow night. I, I guarantee oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're looking forward to that. Uh, but, yeah, talk about big stage. Right before the game, I saw Luke Murray, the uh, UConn assistant, doing a scout. And, oh, he had a, a guest with him. Uh, Bill Murray sat three seats away from me. Uh, I didn't I didn't say, hey, because everyone else in the building was doing it. But uh, that's the kind of stage. And he's going to be uh, – he's got rooting interest on both sides on uh, Saturday night because, obviously, he loves Illinois, being from Illinois. Uh, but I think he'll probably be rooting for his son in UConn in that one. I don't think imagine. he'll be wearing orange in the arena. But to, to get back to this team, Derek, I, I do think that's like my angle coming out of this. And, and you're going to write about it is Luke Goody talked about, hey, we're not happy just to be in the Sweet 16. We came here to win four more. Uh, Terrence Shannon, right after they win, stuck up three. We got three more. 
Like this team thinks it can win a national championship and it's toughest game probably along that road is on Saturday. But I, I don't think that moment's going to be too big for them. Maybe the team will be because UConn is that great. But this team wasn't just happy to get to the Sweet 16. This team really thinks if it plays its best, it can make it. And I asked Brad afterwards, like, how do you get a team mentally ready and confident to do things it's never done before? Because he's done that here, right? To win Big Ten championships, to make those plays, and to not be scared of the moment. It felt like Iowa State was going to take the lead at one point, right? Just the way they were playing, the way yeah, Illinois was sure. doing, some foul trouble. Everyone at home is, is or in this building that's wearing orange is thinking, ah. Oh, man, this could happen. It never felt like the Illini felt that. So it was getting defensive stops late in the game, uh, getting rebound. Marcus Damas and one was a monster play. Luke Goody's three. He kept shooting. His shots looked good, and he kept taking the open shots with confidence. Finally got rewarded for that, and then for Terrence Chan to come in the game and, and have that closer. That that pick, too, was just breathtaking. I, I, I actually like lost my breath when he made that play. That's what big-time players do and got it. And I thought Coleman Hawkins steadied the ship throughout most of that second half. Like, they needed buckets. He got a couple big ones. Needed some defensive stops. He got some big ones. Um, so, for those guys to make those plays, like, they've never done that before at this stage, but they're ready for it, Eric. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, to have Marcus make that in one, I felt like that was a real huge moment because – I think that was the first time, and to your point, I thought for the most part they, they showed poise, but it seemed to, to be wearing some tension, it seemed to be wearing some Terrence is out and Illinois, Iowa State's building confidence and things are kind of stagnating offensively. I thought that obviously you run, for the most part, you're running stuff through Marcus anyway, but Iowa State was blitzing his ball screens and doubling him in the post, and things were tough to come by for him for most of the night and uh, just didn't know where Illinois was going to get it. So to be able to get that and one – flip momentum back. Obviously, then Iowa State calls the timeout. You sub Shannon back in. And then that electric back-to-back threes, Luke Goody stepping up and making that shot. It's funny. We talked to Luke in the locker room. He's like, I thought that was going to be a brick. He's like, it didn't feel good come out of my hand. He's like, the good Lord was smiling on me or something like that. Uh, to, to make but that he was rewarded, I thought, for – I, I thought he was just rewarded because he was taking him with, with rhythm. There was like one Coleman yeah. Hawkins passed up in the corner. I was like, just take it. I take those threes. I know they weren't falling for a long stretch, but they did early. And I thought if you kept taking them with confidence, you'd get rewarded. So uh, I'm, I'm happy yes. Luke Goody's had these moments, man. He deserves this. Yeah, and he plays butt off. I mean, going to the glass and, and playing as hard as he did. Terrence, to the ice water in his veins, to be sitting on the bench right there and to come right in and make that corner three and – one thing we've we've caught ourselves in uh, is I feel like it's going to be turning into the Jordan and LeBron thing with Io and, and, and Terrence. Like uh, one thing I've given Io the the edge on is is the closing time, but this was a season on the line. Like bigger moments, uh, other than the rounds beyond this, which Illinois hasn't been there in forever, don't exist. And well, you're sitting here in the Sweet 16, and you need to come in and and save the day, or, or just. Not necessarily, you know, turn the game around, but take it to the finish line. And, and he was able to do that with that, with the like you said, the pick six, and uh, making some free throws, which obviously was a chore for Illinois throughout the night. So um, it was one of those moments. Like, obviously, we all know '89, we all know '05, but even I was a little young at the time. But Frank Williams in the Sweet 16 to put up 30 against Kansas, get them to that that Elite Eight. Uh, that's something that I I heard about as you know being in Champagne forever, Illini fans, whatnot. This will be one of those 29 points for Terrence against the number one defense in the country to get Illinois to that elite eight. And obviously, they, they're, they're the potential for more moments to build on. But just this postseason run, man, and, and the closing time was he's this is epic. And he's bordering on, if not there, like a, a program legend, really. I mean, that's it's unbelievable. I was looking up the other day, like the greatest NCAA tournaments of all time. If he gets him to a Final Four, he's in that conversation. And if he gets him to a Final Four, I, I think they'll be very dangerous. Uh, the Super Chats are flowing. I, I, we got to get to these, Derek. I'll let wow. these people, uh, our supporters who have been awesome to us, uh, take over here with more than 800 people on, on the live YouTube. I also wanted to shout out, whether it was Luke, Coleman, Quincy, shutting out Momsilovich, yeah. who is a really good player. Now, he's a freshman, big stage. But I asked Quincy afterwards, how did you guys shut him down to 0 for 3 shooting, 0 points, one of the best freshmen uh, in the Big 12. He said physicality. 
Illinois brought some physicality today, and uh, I love that. They out-rebounded uh, Iowa State. And I thought offensively, Derek, they did a really good job. Like 12 turnovers, that's pretty good against Iowa State. They're going to get some of those. But I thought Damask had a couple turnovers, man, but like he, he fought through a lot of that stuff. Like He, he really fought through those screens to move the ball, and the ball was popping uh, to get them the, those open shots. Obviously, later in the game, it fell a little bit, but um, they they gritted it out. They, they found a way to, to, to do that. So uh, kudos to them because I thought that was – they. I thought they came out and really handled the scout really well, and then they handled the moment when it became kind of Iowa State style of play. No doubt, yeah. Uh, two big areas that we talked about coming in that were huge – Offensively, the turnovers, making sure you're not giving Iowa State a team that can struggle to score, easy runouts, and and then obviously playing into the fact that Iowa State is just so good at turning you over. And uh, early on, they, they took care of the ball exceptionally well. And uh, and then I think another big key that didn't work out for Iowa State was they weren't really – I know it, it picked up some in the second half, but they really weren't able to – a team that missed a ton of shots. I mean, they were shot, what, 31%, maybe 29% in the first half. They didn't have very many offensive rebounds at all. Maybe it was two in the entire first half. So yeah. not only was Illinois with their defense, not to pivot to the other side of the ball, uh, I think offensively it was important, but like the ball pressure, um, fighting over screens, blowing up some of their actions, uh, kind of to go back to Momsilovich, like they were in his grill. Like he was not comfortable, and, and he felt a, a team full of grown men going after him. So uh, a big credit to Illinois. And then on the glass, like to be able to get secure those defensive rebounds, uh, I thought Dane was big with his rebounds, even on the offensive side, too. So it was one of those. It definitely took everybody and um, impressive, impressive, especially we focus so much on the offense versus the defense as far as the, the number ones in the country. Illinois defense was the story of the game like that. That yeah. was the reason that they they won the early punch from them and then the, the plays late to close it. Yeah, uh, Mopsilovich should have one point, 0 for 5, 4. I was looking at the halftime box score. But uh, even Gilbert had a good second half. That first half, they erased him. Uh, Curtis Jones was the best player for Iowa State tonight. Got to the free throw line a lot, but 7 of 18 from the floor tonight. Um, they were 13 of 28 at the free throw – or at the, the layups, at, at the rim. And layups and dunks, 13 for 28 tonight. Coleman Hawkins was phenomenal. But as you said, Derek, it took everybody – Six guys had five or more rebounds tonight. Mm -hmm. Brad Underwood's gonna gonna really really love that. All right, let's get to some of these super chats. You guys are freaking awesome. Fedigator, eight eighty eight super chat. Loving the eights tonight. Let's freaking go. We are back. What a great win. Bring on the Huskies. They've not played a physical team as Illinois. We can win that game. I, I do think the UConn fans that were probably in attendance, especially at the start of that game, Derek. Are like, yeah, we'd probably rather play Iowa State. I I thought if. Obviously, you had to win tonight, but I just think Illinois is more well-equipped to, to go with UConn because they can score. I, I just don't know if Iowa State can keep up with UConn, who's got an elite offense, elite defense, just an unbelievable team. Like that, This is the best team Illinois will play all season, I think, even if they made the Final Four. Uh, so this is a monster task, but we know Illinois has got dudes, man, uh, and, and they got right now the best player in college basketball in Terrence Champ. Yeah, UConn's lost one game since Christmas put that in perspective like they're they're just a machine but no doubt 25 I, I and even, 1 25 and 1 since christmas oh my god yeah <laughs> I, I tweeted it out during the game though there were some yukon fans behind me and one of them was letting the the group he was with like dude we do not want illinois to win we we do not want them shannon obviously is a huge factor there being a, an elite player in college basketball as hot as anybody in the country right now and uh, the, the, just the scoring punch, like you said. Uh, and I I was talking to uh, Jeff Goodman a little bit after the game, and he said, you know, Illinois can score with, with UConn. Uh, it's whether, obviously, Illinois can get enough stops. And, uh, you know, UConn is very good defensively too. But uh, that's one thing that Iowa State probably wouldn't bring to the table. You never know what, what, what could happen. But uh, I think they faced a, a taller task to, to match up with them. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think UConn – I'm not going to sit here and say that UConn's going to be scared of Illinois. Like, I think there was a preference that they probably would have rather played Iowa State, but uh, there, there's a big challenge there. But it's one that uh, Illinois is going to show up and see if they uh, measure up. 
five guys that average double figures, Cam Spencer and Caravan. I'm really impressed by those guys can just shoot the lights mm-hmm. out. Steven Castle, probably a lottery pick uh, in this draft, just a big bodied young guard. Now he is young, but he, the yeah. moment did not look too big for him tonight. I just think that San Diego State team was just overwhelmed, uh, as most teams have been by UConn here. And Tristan Newton's one, one of the better guards in the country, right? An All American. Uh, All American. He's been, yeah, the way he's been playing. So it's just everybody's got to be locked in for that. But you get that chance. You get that chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tony says, "Jimmy the layup says, enjoy yourselves." What gift we got tonight? Uh, <laughs> Jimmy the layup. Thank you for the ninety nine ninety nine. Wow. Super chat. That, that'll that help the travel budget a little bit here, but that's why we love it. Uh, let's see. We got more here. Some great super chats from everybody. Uh, AVP had planned a super chat for 888, but I added the one digit for each of the three games. We're going to win from here. That's how that's how the Illini are feeling, Derek. That's how yeah. they, they just feel really confident, and you should be confident in this team. I, I, I don't think there should be pressure on Illinois heading into Saturday, right? I got, listen, I, I don't think UConn. That feels any pressure right now. They are as confident of a bunch as I have seen Dan Hurley. They are smoking teams right now, but it's shocked the world. That's got to be your mentality. Right, yeah. I, I do think that obviously while a lot of the fan base – and when you get here, it changes. You, you sit here at the Selection Sunday, hey, if we got to the Elite Eight, anything that, that happens as far as result beyond that, we're going to be satisfied. And that, that will probably end up being the, the case, but obviously now you – you want to get to that final four. You're on the doorstep, and and just the opportunity to get there is, and it's amazing that we're even having this conversation that, that it's that close. It's that yeah. close to get to a final four. Uh, but I agree with you. Like uh, UConn is going to be fully expected. Someone put it in the in the chat that I think eight and a half point favorites or thereabouts. So um, every, everyone, it seems like all everyone's got the Huskies in their brackets, and uh, it's the it's the runaway favorite, and they're going to have. 80% of the fans in here as well. Maybe, maybe even you, more, but. Reminds you of Illinois fans in, uh, at Allstate in 2005. It does. And they're just, they're, they run such great stuff on offense. They got shooters. They got uh, interior presence and Klingon. Newton breaks things down. Castle, like you said. And then on defense, Klingon at 7-2 in the lane is, is tough. And they're just, they're a fantastic team, but, um, they will have some of the, the expectation on them more so than Illinois. Illinois, though, putting it in terms of their mindset, they expect to be here. They won't shy away from the moment, I wouldn't imagine. I think they're going to feel like they can win. Seth, $50 Super Chat. Thank you, man. Enjoy a round on me tomorrow night. The pubs, boys, go on it. Let's there are it. plenty of good pubs <laughs> in Boston. And after a rainy day, it felt like, you no, know, we were rained out. Like it was a terrible weather day. So I was going to take the boys to the North End, see some of that, the Freedom Trail. Uh, we'll, maybe we get to be able to do some of that tomorrow. Um, Brad, we had to watch all nine things of the Cardinals. And the White Sox. We did that instead. Yeah, and the White Sox. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Brad says – that's right. Brad says, XL, some could argue is an easy path to the Sweet 16. Favorable, for sure. But this one validated the run. Thanks, Brad Underwood and roster depth. Lobster rolls are overrated, he says on the way out. Uh, I'm not the biggest seafood guy, but I do eat seafood when I get to the East Coast. Um, I, I agree with that validating, Derek, because you make the Sweet 16, it's, it's a good season. That's a very good season. Like, that's a very, very good season. It would have been a really, really good team. What, what has this team not done? beat a marquee opponent, like a real true top 20 net opponent. This is the first top 20 net win they have this season. They were 0-4 coming into this game. So to beat a marquee opponent and to do it, to get another couple days on that national stage, I agree with that. that that's validating. This is now one of the best seasons in Illinois history. So yeah. third team to get 29-plus wins. The other two, 89-04 or 05. They went to the final four, right? Um, it's the, what, fourth team to win a Big Ten tournament title. It's the fifth team in the modern era since they expand the tournament to 32 uh, to get to the Elite Eight. That That is you're, – you're getting to this where it's like 89, 2001, 2005, and the 2024 Illini. Those are the best teams in modern history and, and 84 as well. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Um, I do agree with it because people, and, and fairly so, would say – that number one, you beat a, a 14 seed and an 11 seed. Look, you get to the Sweet 16, you snap the streak. That's a that's a heck of an accomplishment, and it would, still would have been a really good season if Illinois did that and got here and fell short. But 
it, it takes it up another notch, like you said, to be in the company of those teams, but also to get that top-notch win, to beat a, a team that was a two-seed and a team that was hot coming in. They were pretty much as hot as you were, having won the Big 12 tournament title as well. So um, that's a big deal, and I think it, it further is changing the – the lens, the framing on Brad and the tournament. Because I think that if he lost this game, it would once again be like, well, you, you face a legit challenge in the tournament. Can Brad get you there? Uh, prior to that at Illinois, they, they hadn't done that. And um, no disrespect to Duquesne, but just, you know, they upset a, B, a BYU team that, you know, would have been viewed as a lot better win. They're, they were higher than you in the net, as we talked about. But to beat Iowa State, big deal. Um, and, man, if you beat UConn, what that's going to look like. Ooh. It's been rare, Derek, that Illinois overachieves in the NCAA tournament, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You had the stat. Like, this is only the third time Illinois has won as a lower seed in the NCAA tournament. So they overachieved. Like, this team has reached its potential and is maximizing its potential. And as Alex says, as Brad has used for many years, we are elite. Yeah, Illinois yep. is an elite program right now. Like, you, yeah. you have that. You have that, Illinois fans. And, yeah, people made jokes – which look, it it was funny how many times he'd say it. It was his favorite term, and, and now they truly are here. They're on that elite. They're in that elite group. Which um, man, it's it's been quite a run, quite a run to get here. And uh, this is I don't want to stop. For sure. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody does. All right, we we've had all these super chats. I'm trying to give them. Uh, Coruscadio, twenty dollars super chat. Grendel's Pub. Uh, that was a book I read in high school, or I was supposed to read in high school, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, Grendel. Uh, TCR Brad, tomorrow, Fenway Park. There's a bar under center field with a view of the field. We heard about this from Mr. Uh, Derek yes. Person. Uh, great spot for food and beverages. Walk the Red Brick uh, Freedom Trail. Plan to do that. Great history sites. Yeah, we got a couple days here, Derek, uh, to go see Boston. Thank you, Brad. Uh, Thanks, Brad. Tyler. You guys are the goods. Thanks for all the fantastic coverage. Go grab a couple beers tomorrow. We're going to have a lot, apparently. But that many yeah. people are sending us. Uh, UConn does not scare me one bit. Nothing we haven't seen before this year, us against the world. Okay. They are We're something good, you though. haven't seen because, listen, Edie is, is his own problem, right? Uh, and, yeah. the, and those Purdue guards are really, really good. But for me, it's just the ability to have all those scores, all those sets that they run. They can play multiple ways. And Danny Hurley is just an elite coach. So I, I do think this challenge is, is bigger and – harder than anything they face. But, Derek, the good thing is you've played Purdue, who I think is probably, what, second most likely title odds right now, uh, and you've yeah. played Tennessee. You, you've played some really tough teams, Iowa State, that, that can at least get you ready that the top team in the country is not going to scare them. Right. No, I think Purdue is obviously comparable when, when you've got the size in the middle. I mean, you're not throwing to Cleveland like, like you throw it to Edie. Uh, make no mistake there. I do just think that they're – there's more dudes on UConn that you got to worry about. Um, with Purdue, you, if you got to focus in on Zach and, and then Braden Smith. Not that Lawyer's not a good player, not that Lance Jones can't get his, but uh, I do think also just, yeah, what they can run offensively. They're running a set almost every time down. It's 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 just very, very complex, and, and it's just hard to defend with the way that they move and flow and come off screens and everything. I, I do think it's great that Illinois is coming off probably their best defensive performance that I can remember. Uh, so just having more bite to them, intensity, locking in on, on those type of things. But uh, they will have their hands full for sure uh, with that with that offense. All right, Sucker Free Sports Talk. Do you question Underwood's decision to have Dane Danger in the game during crunch time? Listen, he didn't have the cleanest game. It was a really up and down experience. I I texted you and Joey at one point. Get the ball out of his hands. Like let's not run Ooh. things around. Just just rebound, big fella. Re his yeah. activity is why he's on the court. His rebounding, his defensive effort. He's a big reason for the at the rim defense as well as Coleman. I thought those guys were great uh, defensively at the rim. The foul on Jones was bad. The turnovers, like the behind the back and train. Like come on, big man. Like let, yeah. let the let the other guys. Uh, handle that. So it was an up and down game for Dane, but with Terrence out, Derek, you needed somebody offensively. And he got what? A, a big layup, a big dunk that Terrence had a great uh, feed that to. Was a and, great and made, pass. Yeah, made one or two free throws. So uh, he gave you five points when you needed it. He gave you rebounds when you needed it. Some at room defense. There was just there was some bad in there, too. I will say that if he executed the behind the back in transition, I would have fell out of my chair. 
Like if he would have got there to the rip now, it, it wasn't close. It was a terrible decision, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it was, it was ballsy by him to try to pull that off and definitely shouldn't have uh, in hindsight. Yes. Fouling a three point shooter. He made some mistakes and, um, but at the same time helped you quite a bit on the glass uh, being able to, I felt like when Shannon was out, I would have liked to almost see them get more post touches for him in the middle of the lane. I thought that was one way that you could attack them. Uh, where they're bringing their doubles, but if he's in the middle of the po- of the paint, um, he's somebody that you. It takes a little bit longer to get there. So uh, you had to you had to roll with, like you said, when Terrence was out. I think it was it was hard to argue to, to go in a different direction. But yeah, he he made things a little more tense than they probably should have been. And, and man. Not that anybody needed extra tension in those closing moments because that was that was crazy. I mean, I looked at my heart rate monitor. And I'm just a, a <laughs> bystander, just just enjoying this game, and it was elevated. I was I was at 90 beats a minute there. Uh, Brandon, this is Brad's best coaching job this year, unquestionably, right, Derek? I mean, just, I, and I, for me, it goes back to the off season of putting together this roster the way he wanted to put it together finding Damask, getting Gary A, who I thought was really good today. I, I thought he gave you really good minutes defensively, toughness, um, and, and made a couple big buckets, got to the free throw line a couple times. Um, I, I thought he was big. But Justin Harmon didn't make a big impact. I thought that was uh, – but he played 28 minutes today. Um, so those guys, to get them, and then obviously to change the booty ball, to get this team to believe in – defense here in the postseason a little bit more uh just have them ready for this moment like to go get dudes is part of coaching too and to get the most out of those guys he's certainly done that yeah but as we talked about um it wasn't just star hunting in the portal either it was finding the right pieces he identified them he knew it was very early on that you know marcus Damas is someone that i i need to have let's go get him Uh, even though he's not on the list of the top 25 to 50 transfers uh, in the country, Quincy Gary is someone they're familiar with. Is a a guy that can can be a role player, can can do some of the, the rebounding, the gritty work, um, and someone that's that's old and, and a veteran. So, uh, Brad run, won the off season in a big big way, and that's obviously part of coaching. Uh, and then to navigate uh, the scheme, like you talked about, to be able to put together a, a number one. I know actually Ken Palm updated UConn's down number one in offense by putting up 80 something against San Diego state. Uh, but it's obviously neck and neck there um, for everyone to be there without a true point guard and the rotation is a big, big deal. And maybe Brad won that uh, little dispute with him versus maybe the world uh, as far as that, can you, can you win and go deep without a point guard? Um, yeah. We, we were and, wrong about those conversations, right? Like I, I, yeah, I, right. For, I, we, you should be like, I don't think they thought, like, thought uh, Mar- Marcus Damask would be this good. It was supposed to be Ty Rogers, but to pivot yeah. to Marcus Damask. Like, and yeah. we got to mention it, to, to handle this Terrence Shannon thing yeah, all year. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Like, yep. That's pretty amazing by this team, by this coaching staff. Uh, and to be honest with you, a little bit Terrence. You know, with that, right. that hanging over his head, um, I mean, we'll see what to make of that. It's a complicated situation. But to deal with that in the middle of a season and, and come out of it um, – better somehow is, is, is amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it is something that you wouldn't have imagined to just the, the crazy wave of emotions where, when around the team and what, how, what the shock value had to be when that, that news came down that, that he was turning himself in to be arrested. Would he play again this year? And then he does come back with the team kind of shifted their identity a little bit without him and just how they, how they got through all that, all the outside noise, all the questions that have been asked about it, um, the, the stir that's been there with him not being made available uh, to the media and whatnot. So um, it's it's been a they've been under the spotlight, under the microscope. And we said it as soon as that uh, as soon as that happened, especially him coming back, Illinois was going to be under the microscope from then on out. And uh, they've they've responded to the pressure, they've responded to uh, just the eyes on them and. They've managed to play fantastic basketball, and obviously Terrence is is just doing unbelievable things out there. It's crazy. It's 2 a.m. Eastern time. There's 1,100 people on this live YouTube channel. Hit that like button. We appreciate you guys. Uh, Hit that like button. Subscribe to us. Uh, Hit that notification bell. That really helps us out. Uh, we got a long night ahead of us, but uh, I know people want to relive what what this game was and what this moment means uh, for Illinois, so we're really happy to do that. Ryan asked, thoughts on the refs? I thought by the end of the game, Derek had evened out. I thought in the first half it was called 
the way Illinois wanted this game to get called. They just shot terribly from the free throw line. What was it, 8 of 20 to start this game? Um, yeah. Like they, they, they didn't take advantage of the way this game was being called. Uh, I thought it was a favorable for Illinois. I thought the foul call on Coleman Hawkins on the block, that was a charge. That should have been a charge. Uh, and then Terrence Shannon getting the ball <laughs> and getting called for his third foul, I thought that was a rough one. Um, and uh, I saw on the sheet when we got it, it was Tony Green, and then we got oh, Courtney. Boy. They handed out a corrected one. It was Courtney. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but Illinois 6-0 and in games with Courtney Green, so maybe that's not a, a terrible thing. He had some questionable calls, as, as he always does. But I thought by the end of the game, it, it, it pretty much evened out because I thought the first half was, was better for Illinois. The third one on Shannon and the one on Coleman Hawkins were the rough ones. Yeah, admittedly, not having the access to a lot of the replays, it was tough to be able to judge. So I'm sure that you know, people watching at home on the TV probably had a, a better gauge of it. Um, anytime that Courtney Green's involved in the game, you know it's probably not going to be the the most um, best conversion rate of, of right calls. So I, I agree with you, though. Like Illinois getting the opportunities to get to the line in the first half uh, felt like I, I do – Credit Illinois, like I felt like their effort led to Iowa State fouling them in the first half, like going to the glass, uh, especially second chance, and, and some of the blockouts are just uh, trying to keep Illinois off there. I was able to to get them to the free throw line, but uh, there's no doubt it, it seemed like Illinois fight trying to fight through screens in the second half. Iowa State used that to to draw some fouls, and uh, there were some questionable ones for sure, but. It would have been hard, uh, and admittedly, again, I need to go back and watch the Shannon fouls, but if, if him getting four was still ten minutes to go, essentially, nine and a half, whatever it was, was the difference in the game, then you, you would have probably felt like you got screwed. Yeah, I, I asked Deion Thomas. He was right here. For, I asked, that The fourth foul, I said, was definitely a foul, right? And I asked somebody who was watching the game, and they said, yeah, he, he just ran through somebody. That third one, Deion was right in front of me. He said, I can't believe he was called for that one, the Coleman one. Like, those were, those were the two – but uh, I thought it was kind of called like a Big Ten game, and that was a little ticky-tack. Uh, and they didn't let Iowa State play the way that kind of Iowa State wanted to. So I thought uh, that was pretty much a good thing for Illinois. A couple more Super Chats um, before we get out of here. Appreciate all you guys. Nick, love the physicality open the game. Felt that it dipped to open the second half. Going to need that for 40 against the Huskies. You're going to need your A-plus game, A-level game at the, at the very bad, like worst, uh, to beat UConn. For sure. Yeah, Iowa State started to get in the rim second half. There were more opportunities on the glass for them that they took advantage of offensive rebound-wise. So it, it did feel like there was a little bit of a letdown. Look, you, Iowa State's here for a reason, too, so they're going to make plays. But you, you're going to need it throughout the entirety of the game because UConn gives you such a small margin for error for how they can score uh, pretty effortlessly. And then uh, defensively, they're, they're probably underrated because we talk so much about their offense, their top 10 defense. So uh, you're really going to need to – to not have a letdown, to just have a extraordinary effort of the season type of game, and uh, we'll see if they bring that. Uh, Field Z, maybe shout out to your boy Justin. I sort of feel like having to go through <laughs> Iowa State's defense right before UConn could prove to be such a blessing in disguise. Excited for Saturday. Thanks for the coverage and everything you guys do. Uh, what do you think about that? Because UConn doesn't play this kind of defense. They're drop coverage uh, with, with yeah. clinging down there, big physical. Um, and and they, they got some athletic dudes as well. But, yeah, I think I think Illinois can score on UConn. Uh, my, my question is, can they can they stop UConn from scoring? Right. I think that just the nastiness that it took to to compete with Iowa State, to know that's that was the type of game you're going to go into, and, and to have the defense show up like that, I think that, that is a good thing to then translate into facing UConn. Like, uh, uh, yes, diff completely different offensive challenge. Uh, challenges that you're going to face, obviously, with what UConn presents, and Iowa State's a team that uh, is not known to be uh, all that all that gifted. They're not horrible offensively, but they're not obviously. You know, they're probably average as far as high major teams. But I, I just think that to get that that grittiness back, the confidence on defense, the feeling like that they they have that edge going in there um, is something that you can you can build on and then apply, obviously, to UConn. Like you said, though, a different challenge. Um, We'll see. We'll, we'll see uh, probably early on on Saturday how we feel about that. But um, there, there would be no real, like, Sweet 16 perfect comp, perfect prep for UConn. Like, oh, well, we're going to play pretty much the same type of team. There's there's one UConn, but 
Uh, I yeah. get the, the kind of line of thinking of this game defensively was a, a big step forward for Illinois. Maybe that can then apply to what's now the nation's number one offense. All I'm thinking about as we wrap up here, Derek, um, is like that Shannon steal and dunk. Like that that's going to live on in lore. Like I, I don't know how many other plays. I mean, obviously the 05 come back against Arizona. Uh, Roger Powell put back dunk. Like there are certain yeah. moments that have that. Like that one is is going to be up there with some of the biggest plays in Illinois tournament history. That's a great call. Yeah. Um, the highlight tapes when, when you see those moments through the years. It's that you're right. That's one of those. And the opportunity to to make those moments here. I mean, that's you're paying it off by doing the work to get here and then to capitalize in that moment it says a lot, obviously about Illinois, the, the season that they're having, uh, how they've gotten here. Um, and then for a, a big time player to step up and make that play. So um, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that, that it, it's reached this point. It's been so long for Illinois. They, they've dreamed about being back here and uh, they deserve it. The fans deserve it. The program deserves it. Uh, it's just, I'm almost – someone said it in the chat. Like, I'm at a loss for words. Maybe it's because it's 2 a.m. here. And, uh, <laughs> well, Brad deserves it. Brad deserves but, yeah, it. Brad deserves it, too. And uh, yeah, it, it, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of one thing for me that I keep going back to is just the just the process of Brad bringing it to this point. Um, he, he mentioned it, you know, after Omaha. Like, I always expected to be here. But, I, you know, it, it took a lot turn Illinois around from bottom of the Big Ten to even just being a tournament team and uh, to survive or to, to move on past the unsatisfying feeling with the Iowa and Kofi team. We are one seed and take that, take the heat of the tournament uh, criticism and whatnot. And then to get here is, man, uh, it's, it's been a ride. And uh, Josh Whitman got that one right. Wow. Oh, hell, hell yeah, you did. Uh, Alain <laughs> Idell forever. Yelled at you in Omaha during Duquesne. Times are good. I thought he said vibes are good. Uh, I thought that was a nice throwback to, to when vibes weren't very good last year. Uh, you've entertained us through it all from Elijah Thomas to Fears. Thank you, TSJ, Alain I Goat, Sharpie. Uh, that is for sure for, for Terrence Shannon. But, yeah, like just, just to get to this moment and Derek to have the chance to shock the world. Like Illinois is one step away from a Final Four. This team is one step away from a Final Four, and you're an eight and a half point underdog, right? And I think you should be. Like that's how good this UConn team is. But just give yourself a chance. Get in a battle in the second half and see if your superstar can take over. If you get the defensive stops you need, because boy, the the grit of this team is is really showing up. The confidence of this team uh, is really showing up. So you got this moment, man. Like let's see what they make of it because. Is the best team left that you're probably going to play. Uh, and if you win this, you get to play for another week and uh, get to play in an NFL stadium in front of 60,000 people on the biggest national stage and show that, yeah, Illinois is, is back completely. Like they, They'll do that on Saturday, but uh, you get a chance to do it again potentially. Right. And as far as presenting the challenge to have arguably the, the best player in college basketball over the last month, to throw that out the, at the elite team out there in, in college basketball, the number one overall seed, the, the team that's lost once since Christmas, like that could be part of the formula is just to have the best dude on the floor. That's what you always usually kind of want. Like we talked about it, obviously with Iowa, with Kofi, if, if you, if you're in a high level game and your star is the best player on the court, then you have a chance. And that's what Terrence Shannon provides for Illinois. Obviously then you mix in a lot of the supporting cast pieces and, it's it wouldn't be a shock of a of an upset like that that's the thing and they won't view it like that either they're a they're a monster offensively uh just like UConn is it's whether Illinois can get enough stops in comparison uh, obviously the, the Huskies can can do that as well but um yeah to be one game away from from really putting yourself in that elite company of like you said 89 01 05 you, you take out 01 obviously if you make the final four and um, 40 minutes of basketball to determine that. That's an incredible opportunity, um, and uh, I can't wait to see it. Can't wait. To I see just it. got two more things, Derek, before we get out of here. Tulip just texted me a tweet from Ken Pomeroy. 
Terrence Shannon had a usage of 55% tonight. That's the second highest usage rate for any player in any game this season with a minimum of 20 minutes played. Also marked seven consecutive games. He served the Ken Palm MVP of a game. It is just wow. – they get to a Final Four. This is like Kemba, Christian Leitner. You know, like you can go to any of those guys that, that are on that sure. list. Like, it is that type of run. And then Cody asked, not to count my chickens, but does the chances for a chip feel real yet? If you beat UConn, of course – <laughs> yeah, the, the, this team, if you beat UConn, you can you can beat anybody. And in the national semifinal, it's going to be either Alabama or Clemson. Derek, like an Alabama's offense is a beast. Uh, Clemson is playing unbelievable for Brad Brown. Now, I, I think it's going to be Alabama coming out of that one. But you'd be favored, I think, in, in that game. And we'll have to see what comes out of the rest. But we know they can compete with Purdue. We know they can compete with Tennessee, um, Marquette. We know we can compete with them. And Houston and Duke, like those are all really good teams. But yeah, if you can find a way to beat UConn, you can beat anybody. You can win a national championship. Are you telling me Rafael Davis is Illinois versus Purdue and the final could happen? Oh no, oh no. Um, obviously, oh yes, that'd be awesome uh, to cover and uh, for this program, obviously. Uh, but yeah, to, to know you're 40 minutes away from maybe getting. Maybe getting it done. If you, yeah, if you win that game, then you can obviously cut down the nets. I think it's it's in the moment, like now, like really digesting that and saying, could Illinois win a national title? It's still kind of surreal to even say that, but um, yeah, they can, they can, and and to go through the defending champs, then they will obviously make that very very real if they can get that done. And forty minutes of basketball to see if uh, they can get there. I'm blown away. I always knew this could be the case. Uh, Illini Nation is awoken, and they're still w- awake at uh, 2 a.m. <laughs> Eastern time with 1,100 people on our live YouTube channel. Can't thank you guys enough. Thank you for all the Super Chats. Your support is awesome. It allows us to go cover this thing, to have three guys covering this team in depth on the road. That's not cheap, but it's made possible by the, your guys' support. So whether you're just watching, following on our podcast, or if you're a VIP member, and by the way, Derek, uh, Josh Harvey from our 24-7 Sports. So we got a 60% off VIP sale going on right now. So they did that live. So that's going on right now. If you're not a VIP member, uh, you can support us that way as well. But we thank you for all your support. We'll be in Boston for a couple more days uh, covering this amazing run by Illinois basketball. Derek, any final thoughts? We're not leaving. <laughs> that's not the one thing I got. I can't. I'm just uh... – I'm beyond excited to uh, enjoy Boston a little bit more, but just to know that on this court here in uh, less than 48 hours, we're tipping it up against UConn and chance to go to the Final Four. The fact that they're at the doorstep of the Final Four is is mind-blowing. But uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it because uh, I know you've been using the line like you're in the good old days, the, the old uh, reference to the office. Like, this is true. This is I true, think everyone man. knows and now it's the good old days. It's the good old days. <laughs> They're back. All right. Thank you to Let's everybody for listening to the Line Inquirer podcast or watching live on the YouTube channel. Uh, stay tuned. When you wake up in the morning or when you get home from the bars later this morning, uh, we will have more content for you at IlliniInquirer.com. Everybody have a great morning. Have a great weekend leading into Saturday's huge tip-off for a chance of Final Four against the number one team in the country, the UConn Huskies. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Illini Inquirer podcast.